What up, guys? It's your boy, The Hater, and as we say, a video a day keeps the hater getting paid. Now, some preliminary matters. The Hater bought Mortal Kombat 11, I mean, sorry, Mortal Kombat 1 yesterday, so I might be doing a stream. And I would encourage that when I do this stream, people join, and if they want to play me, they can play me on PS5. Now, I'm not sure when I'm going to do this, because quite honestly, I need to get good at the game first. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be out there embarrassing myself. Now, with that being said, let's get to the video of the day. The video of the day has to do with this really strange phenomenon in wrestling, right? That people just kind of have to, you know, not look at, right? We just kind of have to ignore the fact that we have this thing happening, right? And the thing that I'm talking about is the inexplicable differences between very similar wrestlers, right? So, okay, once in a while, you're going to have wrestlers that are similar, right? Nowadays, everyone's similar, but, you know, you might have Santos Escobar and you might have Joaquin Wilde, right? They're both luchadors. They're both about the same size, right? For some reason, Santos is the leader and Joaquin is the follower. Maybe that's explained by the fact that Santos is more charismatic and charismatic people tend to be leaders versus, like, boring people, right? But what happens... When you have two wrestlers who look the same, they wrestle the same, but they're not treated the same, right? A great example would be Kevin Owens and Bull Dempsey. Remember Bull Dempsey? He was another fat guy with no gimmick, right? Well, at least Bull Dempsey's gimmick became that he's a fat guy, right? But Bull Dempsey is there and Kevin Owens is there. But for some reason, Kevin Owens is better than Bull Dempsey. Why? Right? We know it's a fake sport, and there's no way to know which one of them is more athletic. I personally think it's Bull Dempsey. Right? Why is it that Kevin Owens gets a boost in his career, and Bull Dempsey doesn't? No one can really answer this question correctly. Just like no one can answer my other question of what makes Gunter better than Kozlov. What is it? Right? He's not better in the ring. Right? He's not definitely not more charismatic, because neither of them are known for their charisma. Right? Kozlov is bigger than him. Kozlov is stronger than him. Kozlov would whoop his ass in real life, right? And Kozlov had a better pedigree in the sense that he beat Undertaker clean. He was in the main. He was in the actual main event. So why is it that the wrestling fan base considers Walter or Gunter rather better than Kozlov? The only answer is because they're told to, right? There is no reason, no discernible reason. You can rack your brain all day. Walter doesn't have better moves than Kozlov. Absolutely not. No, he doesn't, right? But what makes him better? The, what makes him better is just this. People say he's better. And then people that don't think for themselves think, oh, well, of course he's better than Kozlov. When I went to Philadelphia to watch the Royal Rumble, the one that Nakamura won, there was this guy in front of me. He was a black guy. That's all I know about him. So black guy, if you were there and you were talking to me, not that you'd know what I look like, um, at Philadelphia and you're listening, shout out to you. And maybe you'll know because of this conversation, random guy that I met. So this, so this black guy in front of me and I, we became kind of like WrestleMania friends, right? During the event, we were just talking the whole time. He was a really nice guy. I really enjoyed his company. And he had another guy with him, but this guy was kind of like secondary, right? And me and him were talking and Finn Balor comes out and I start booing. This guy starts cheering. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, bro, Finn Balor rules. And I'm like, no, he doesn't. Why does he rule? Next up, or before that, I don't know, Apollo Crews comes out. And I start cheering, because I like Apollo Crews. This guy starts booing. And I'm like, well, wait a second. I tap him on the shoulder. I'm like, bro, why do you like Finn Balor and not Apollo Crews? Right? In other words, what does Finn Balor have that Apollo Crews doesn't have? And his answer was, Apollo Crews looks like a generic creator wrestler. And I'm like, so does Finn Balor. What's the difference? Right? What is the difference the way they're being presented? Finn Balor has no gimmick or personality. Apollo Crews has no gimmick or personality. Once in a while, Finn Balor puts on paint, calls himself the demon, which is not, it's just, it's just someone putting on paint. Anyone can do it. You can have Apollo Crews put on paint and call himself the demon, right? There's nothing, there's nothing there. Nothing changes when he's a demon. So the point is, why is it that these wrestlers that are similar get treated differently, right? The point becomes even more egregious when you see wrestlers that are not the same, but the inferior wrestler is treated better, Right? I'll give you an example, one that may shock some of you. Kevin Owens and Karrion Cross. Now, I think Karrion Cross is complete garbage. I think Kevin Owens is complete garbage. But at the very least, Karrion Cross looks 
like a wrestler, right? I'm not saying he's Batista or anything like that, but compared to Kevin Owens, it's very clear which one of them is probably stronger, faster, more athletic, right? So why is it that Karrion Cross is a jobber? I mean, we all know the answer, but why is it that he's a jobber in relation to Kevin Owens having a successful career? What makes Kevin Owens better than Karrion Cross? You know, if we're being fair, it's a Kozlov Gunter scenario, right? They're the same thing, except one is clearly better than the other. You can make the argument that Gunter is at least equal to Kozlov because they're the exact same character. They look very similar. They wrestle very similar, except Walter is more botchy and has worse moves. That's right, I said it. I'm tired of this Walter's great in the ring thing. No, he's not, right? Here's how I know. This guy does a clothesline, it looks different every time. He does a power bomb, it looks different every time. Right? When Shawn Michaels does something, it looks the same every time. When Chris Benoit did something, it looks the same every time. When Jericho does something, it looks the same almost every time. Right? That's the, the, the metrics of someone who's good at their job. Walter just does random moves. He looks sloppy. He dives off the, off the top rope. He looks sloppy. Right? Kozlov wasn't as sloppy. Now, I'm not saying Kozlov was, you know, Dean Malenko. But, but definitely you can make the argument that Kozlov is better in the ring than Walter. But if you make that argument on, let's say, an online forum, people are going to jump down your throat, right? But nobody can explain to me why it is that Cesaro is treated differently than Timothy Thatcher. I mean, maybe Cesaro is... Actually, he's, a, he's an outlier because Cesaro can do crazy things. Cesaro can do, like, a swing on, like, Big Show. You know what I mean? Cesaro actually is exceptional in terms of his abilities, like his physical gifts. But what about everybody else that is not like that, right? What makes Dolph Ziggler better than Tyler Breeze? They're the same exact character. The same exact thing. Fandango is also the same exact character as them. What makes Fandango worse than Dolph Ziggler, right? What makes the... What, what criteria do we use to establish the hierarchy of wrestlers, right? There are certain things that we use. For example, John Cena is good in the ring. I'd say he's great in the ring, right? John Cena is obviously charismatic, right? So therefore, John Cena is going to be higher up on the card than, I don't know, Zack Ryder, right? So that explains why John Cena is above Zack Ryder. Kane is big and strong. He's got a cool gimmick. That explains why Kane is historically going to be higher up on the card than, I don't know, Val Venus, right? You can point to something and you can say, well, the reason why Kane's in the main event is because Kane is 6'10 or whatever, 320 pounds, and has a cool gimmick. So that's why Kane was put in the main event, and that's why, I don't know, uh, Xavier Woods was not, right? You can, that's, that's the answer. But what about when we're talking about other main eventers or mid-carders, right? How do we discern and, and explain why Xavier Woods is better than Cedric Alexander. Why is he better, right? Who, who said, who established this? Why is Cedric Alexander worse than Andrade, right? Why? What is it that differentiates them, first of all? They, neither of them have a gimmick. Neither of them, do, like, you know, are John Cena. But they're both athletic. They're both decent. So why is it that Cedric Alexander never got a shot, but Xavier Woods keeps getting opportunity after opportunity and does nothing with them, right? So the wrestling fans... Don't want to do the work because I understand that wrestling is not like a critical thinking, you know, form of entertainment and nobody really cares enough. But I do. I like wrestling. So I'd like these things to be explained to me, right? You look at, let's say you look at, I don't know, Grandmaster Sexay, rest in peace, and Scotty Too Hotty, right? Scotty Too Hotty and Grandmaster Sexy, Sexay, right, were in a fun tag team with a cool gimmick, right? It was an entertaining gimmick, like a very 90s hip-hop culture gimmick, right? Now, you take that, and you, you take all the hard work that Scotty Tuati puts in to make his hair stand up straight, and to do a move like the worm, right? And to get the move over, right? And then you compare that. You compare that with Mustafa Ali, and you tell me that Scotty Tuati is not a legend compared to Mustafa Ali, who has done nothing but steal money from, from the company until they fired him? So you tell me, you tell me what exactly differentiates Mustafa Ali from Cedric Alexander. One is the heart, the other one is the soul of 205 Live. In other words, they're both jobbers that need to be removed from the company. Now, the point I'm trying to make is this. When two wrestlers or two entities of any sort appear exactly the same, it is a natural proclivity to try to find the distinction between the two. When we cannot find the distinction, we should not substitute a lack of a, lack of a distinction 
with a phantom dis- a phantom distinction, right? So nobody could explain why Walter is better than Kozlov. Literally no one can. It's all subjective arguments. It's not like Kozlov is smaller or, you know, anything like that. I mean, the only argument is maybe Gunter can speak better English, but he doesn't cut promo, so it doesn't matter, right? But they're both foreign heels, right? Who just are badasses. That's literally their entire, their entire gimmick, right? They could have just kept Kozlov instead of just bringing in Walter. I don't know why, but that's what they chose. So the point I'm trying to make is if you cannot articulate a difference, right? If you cannot explain to me why Roman Reigns is better than Seth Rollins, which everyone easily can, right? He's better looking. He's in better shape. He's, I mean, I can't say he's better than Ring, I guess, but he's better at promos by a hundred times, right? He's more serious looking and he carries himself like a champion instead of a goof, right? Those are the fundamental differences and the reason why, why Seth Rollins is it was always destined to be below Roman Reigns um, in the hierarchy of the Shield or wrestling, right? But you cannot say the same thing about every wrestler uh, and their clear counterpart, right? There are wrestlers like Kevin Owens who are obviously worse than people like Karrion Cross. They are obviously worse than basically everyone on their, their same size that wrestles in a similar brawler-esque style, right? He's not good. So if nobody can explain it, then why does he get pushes? Why is Nakamura better than Tozawa? They're both Japanese. Tozawa is like 100 times more charismatic, in my opinion, because he's actually funny. Nakamura just stands there and just tries to act cool, and it's like, it's like it's cringe. It's only cool for like anime nerds, right? You look at Tajiri's charisma, you compare it to, to, to Nakamura and it becomes clear, right? When it's not clear, we cannot substitute this lack of clarity with just inventing things. And with that being said, cucks, take care of yourself.